Ed, who's there? And this is, uh, Klaus. This is Klaus Mickelson. Hey, Klaus. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, Klaus. Uh, and by the way, I, I spoke on the subject of S&W and, uh, a couple of months ago and had a fabulous uh, side conversation with one of your folks, uh, Chris, on, on this very same subject. So yeah. I'm glad to see you raise the red flag because I've been uh, throwing it out there for years. But uh, the, one, the one thing that hasn't really cropped into the discussion I think is an important one is uh, the cost. And, uh, you know, we all know the drives are getting uh, denser and more capacious, and, but they're also getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And there's a bit of a trade-off between the cost of the media and also the cost of the environmentals. But as you start looking into the future and we, we get to these um, – 8 and 20 and 40 and 50 terabyte drives, they're going to be pretty damn cheap when it comes to a cost per terabyte uh, basis. Yep. So the concept of keeping, um, and, and by the way, when I talk about data dispersion, I, I, we do that at Hitachi more for a performance uh, uh, aspect than, uh, than anything else. But uh, when, as the cost gets cheaper, you can begin to replicate this uh, uh, more and more times. And uh, uh, I, that really seems like an opportunity, I think, from the uh, technology. Uh, if, for example, you kept four copies of the data on four separate drives, uh, not necessarily in a network environment, but within a uh, single array. Yep. Yeah, so just to, to talk about cost and replication, certainly there will be some applications where making four copies makes sense. But there, there's, we've seen some markets like social networking. Those guys are so price sensitive. Um, there's no way they're going to make four copies. So what, what they're looking for, is in, it's not just, you know, the cost of the drives. It's like four times as much electricity, four times as much well, you know, data center if, space. If somebody loses a tweet, that's not going to uh, end the world. But uh, if you start looking at the, you know, the enterprise applications, the databases, the thing that really drives uh, businesses worldwide, uh, yeah, I think you can afford to keep uh, multiple copies and uh, yeah, that... reduce the risk of uh, data loss. Yeah, so let me just offer this as an, as, a, as an alternative. So certainly four copies is one way to create reliability, and it has known uh, pluses and minuses. A different way to create, if you're, if you're, if what four copies gives you is the ability to tolerate the simultaneous failure of three things, uh, which is pretty good. An, another way to do that, you know, is to, and, and if let's say those were four RAID copies, you, you'd also have the overhead of RAID. So you would be physically storing probably five to six times as many bits as you started with. Uh, another way to do that would be to do something like, you know, an extreme example. Um, well, let's just say, you know, like a 10 of 16 um, in, with dispersal, where you're, you're spreading um, uh, uh, 16 slices, um, which are each one-tenth the size of the original copy across 16 different servers in such a manner that you could tolerate the simultaneous failure of any six of them. That would give you comparable reliability to four copies. Um, and the, but then when you add up the physical number of bits, with four copies, you're going to have, if, if they're RAID copies, you know, at least, let's say, 5 to 6x what you start with. So it's you know, 400 to 500% overhead. Um, with a 10 of 16 dispersal, you, you know, the slices are each one-tenth the size of the original. There's up to 16 of them, so at most you have 160%. So you'd have 60% overhead in your storage for comparable reliability uh, versus, you know, 400 or 500%. So, so there will be many customers that will want to have, you know, that kind of increased efficiency in terms of electricity, floor space, power, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, I, I think I sort of categorize the world into uh, two components. One is the... Um, uh, the old structured uh, data that we sometimes tend to ignore, but uh, really, like I said, runs uh, applications worldwide, and then the uh, unstructured content uh, depots. And the the uh, impact of data loss between those two different worlds is entirely different. And you yep. can tolerate uh, data loss in one part of that world um, w without uh, 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 serious disaster. In the other part of the world, you can't. Yeah. So we may be talking about two different solutions there. Right, and if and if you're dealing with multiple sort of RAID one copies, uh, the rebuild time and the impact on performance during rebuild is substantially less. Isn't that correct, Klaus? Yeah, oh, absolutely. So, so, so back to one of the earlier comments. If I will, if I look holistically at a database application, transaction application, RAID one with multiple copies may continue to be the most cost-effective and reliable way to go forward for that type of data. Okay. And for, for the rest of the data, which is, which is where the bulk of the storage is, some other algorithm may be more appropriate. 
So and, I, and, 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 go ahead. And that's my point. I think. Um, I mean, even rate five or rate six in uh, database applications, if the the rate is done at the right level, uh, is acceptable in terms of uh, performance. And you know, it, it, the other part of this, then it gets into the cost, is what I call capacity efficiencies. So we're seeing a lot more uh, deduplication, compression. Uh, you know, different ways to uh, uh, get more out of the capacity. And uh, so that sort of mitigates uh, what you just said, Chris, uh, in terms of the, uh, the cost of additional copies of storage. I'll, I want to. Yeah, but why? why but so, for example, if you look at deduplication or compression, um, if that gave you, let's say, a 4x gain in efficiency, that would be pretty great. Um, you know, or, you know, I'd say that's typical. You know, with dispersal, I think you. You know, in the example I mentioned earlier, you would also have about a 4x gain in efficiency. So there's no reason, you know, so if you were to dedupe and then um, store the deduped uh, data on a dispersed storage system, the, the realized efficiency would be the product. So it would be 4 times 4. So it would be one, it would be 16 times more efficient. So that's, you know, so 4x efficient is great, but 4x squared is even better. Yeah, so, that, yeah, you know that that's that's pretty compelling, and and I agree with you that if in a database environment, absolutely, you know most of the time, you know, re, uh, replicated copies makes a lot of sense, but you know if you look at the number of bits that are in the world, you know either on a, you know, the, looking at like an average hard drive, how many bits, what the bits are, or kind of coursing through the internet, the the majority of bits now since since about uh, it was around uh, 1999 are now unstructured content. Right. Uh, and it's it's now about 65 to 70 percent of all bits are unstructured content. That that's the area where I think dispersal really plays. We're not suggesting for structured content um, that, that that's the the right fit, but unstructured content is the largest amount of data, and it's the fastest. Oh. It's where all the growth of storage is. No, abso absolutely no question about it. But that, that's also I mean you mentioned uh, RAID uh, M by N uh, earlier. And uh, that seems to be, uh, in, in my mind, a reasonable approach for uh, a lot of this uh, unstructured data. It doesn't have the uh, performance requirements necessarily that right, the structured yeah. does. And uh, you know, if it takes a, a month or two to rebuild the drive, and you've got uh, three or four or five uh, uh, extra equivalent spares uh, sitting out there, that's acceptable. Yeah, but yeah, your absolutely. earlier your earlier point, Chris, of if I've compressed, if I've deduped. And if I've encrypted data and I lose a bit, it, the impact is substantially greater. Yeah, so, absolutely. So that, that always has to weigh in on this. Yeah, with, with, like with, with good in encryption, if you lose a bit, the data should be gone. That's how encryption works. And that's also <laughs> true of, of compression. The more efficient compression becomes, the, more the less you tolerant you are of bit loss. Right, and, right. And, and, and what's happening is compression is also being driven by Moore's Law. Because of the you know greater availability of massive amounts of processing, people get more and more sophisticated compression techniques, such as right. deduplication. And as they do that, which they will inevitably inevitably do, because Moore's law is not going to stop, then then the physical storage system or the, the application that's producing this highly compressed storage will become less and less tolerant to bit failure. Right. I mean, you know, if you don't use compression, bit failure is not a big deal, but you start really cranking up the compression and it starts getting more efficient, which of course it's going to, and then, it, you know, certainly if you layer encryption on top of that, then individual bit failures become huge problems.